Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video, do make sure to like and subscribe and come hang out with us in Discord. Hey guys, it's Gene, and welcome to the Week 3 MVP video. Last week's overall server winner was the Inteleon, and for his achievements he got the Shots Fired emoji to use in our Discord server. So congratulations Inteleon. Please continue to support the videos and give this a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss these videos every week. Now let's get right in to this week's nominees. So we're going to start, as always, in the Peach League, and our nominee today is Mega Alakazam here, and it's facing a really cool Sun team, but it's in a lot of trouble. It is down 4-5, to five, and its team has had a really tough time breaking through. In fact, its Zygarde is already at 45%, and his Ogre Pawn is at 38%. So he's down quite a bit here. But the Torkoal has gone for rest and is asleep right now. So that gives Alakazam the chance to Mega and set up a sub here on the Torkoal for free as it is still fast asleep. Then it can do massive damage to the Sunsetter, get a defense drop that doesn't really matter. And then it has to switch it out into its Terra Fire um, Venusaur, which gets taken out for its first kill. Now Shadow Sneak drops the sub and it's able to do huge damage to the Mega Bayonet. So at this point, it has put huge chip on Torkoal, Mega Bayonet, and killed the Venusaur. Now let's cut ahead and see how it closes out the match. Now later in the match, it's able to come in to revenge kill here. And because there is no sun, right now this walking wake this Protosynthesis ability is not active, which would be giving it a speed boost, allowing it to outspeed the Mega Alakazam. But because the sun is down, Mega Alakazam can come in and threaten to revenge kill it. So he switches out into his Torkoal here, which gets taken out on the next turn after setting up a sub, a really good play, gets taken out here. So this is the last set of sun we're going to have in the game. Mega Bayonet comes in and gets fully paralyzed trying to use that Shadow Sneak. And that's going to be the game right there. Walking Wake comes in. It does get the speed boost this time, but it just has to take out the sub with it. Now, Dazzling Gleam is enough to take it out from 65%. And Great Tusk, even with the defense raise, not going to stand a chance against the Psychic. And Mega Alakazam closes out the game in style with a little bit of luck from the Paralysis. Next up, we have the Beauty League. And our nominee is this here, Dancing Duck. And it's going to come in on the Caesar as the Caesar goes for Roost. And it's up 4-3, to three, and as you can see, it didn't even come in for the first time in the game until turn 47. So our player here has been really patient bringing in his late game cleaner at the last possible moment. Uh, what's really important to note is how low all these Pokémon are, although Audino does have boots, so that will help. So. Really, it has to mostly deal with the Caesar here. It does 32% with that Aqua Step, and it gets its boots knocked off there. And then it gets the High Roll Aqua Step there, and that will get it its Moxie Boost. And it's at plus two speed. A Close Combat takes out the Audino, and it gets another Attack Boost. And finally, Marshadow comes in, but it's going to fall to Hazards. And the Duck is able to just clean up in the end game here with a really well played patient match. In Brain League, we actually have a really clean sweep here from the Roaring Moon, and it's against a cool hail team, or snow team, I suppose. Uh, the idea is Glow King here sets up a chilly reception into the Articuno, which goes for Aurora Veil, vale, and then one of these three Pokemon at the bottom here can try and set up to win. However, with Glow King down, the team's in trouble, and Roaring Moon has come to sweep. So it gets its first kill with a knockoff right there. Then Wash comes in and it switches out, actually fearing that Will-O-Wisp, but the Rotom Wash reveals Nasty Plot and picks up a kill right here. But now that it knows its offensive Rotom, he can go back into Roaring Moon, set up a Dragon Dance, and after eating a Thunderbolt, he can proceed to sweep the remaining four Pokémon here with a knockoff to Rotom and a Dragon Claw to the Salamence and a Dragon Claw to the Blaziken, it does not have Protect. And finally, one more knockoff to end the match here, and that is a clean five kills for the Raring Moon. Good game. 
in the Muscle League, we have a match I actually got to see live. It was really exciting. And so the first thing to point out is they are down their ho -Oh, and that's because they actually made a mistake in the team builder and went pressure ho -Oh instead of regenerator. And so it lost a lot of its bulk it would normally have. Um, and so as we can see, it's a 5v5 situation. Skarmory is just getting up hazards as Driftblim comes in. Uh, and they still have their S plus Lunala alive on their side of the field. And so looking at the opponent here, there is a major threat for Driftblim in Raging Bolt, which has Thunderclap already revealed. Because that's going to hit Driftblim for stab, super effective priority damage. So let's see how this Driftblim kind of navigates that situation to do a lot of work in this game. It goes for a Calm Mind right away to start setting up as that Skarmory keeps putting up hazards. It gets to plus two here and Skarmory goes, uh oh, need to click Brave Bird, get some damage and it eats its citrus berry, and that's super important. Not only does that give it, you know, some of its health back, but that allows it to activate its unburden ability, doubling its speed. So now the Drift Blim is at plus two special attack, plus two special defense, and effectively plus two speed. And let's watch the carnage here. A Shadow Ball is able to take out the Skarmory, and that's only because Skarmory went for that Brave Bird and broke it sturdy. Then comes in Iron Val, and it's actually a booster speed set, so that means it's going to outspeed the Drift Blim here. Um, however, it's going to take a lot of damage from a plus two Drift Blim. And Drift Blim goes for Terra Fairy here, as the Iron Val sets up a Calm Mind. I think that Terra Fairy was probably to da dodge a super effective Shadow Ball. Um, and I don't know if this was calc or not, but the Iron Val, after one Calm Mind, just lives the Shadow Ball and gets off a Moonblast, which Driftblim is able to live and finish it off with a Shadow Ball. So that's two kills. And here is that Raging Bolt I was talking about earlier. So let's see how it gets around that Thunderclap. Part of it is that now that it's Terra Fairy, it's not weak to Thunderclap anymore, but Raging Bolt is still very strong. And so it fails because it's able to use Strength Sap and actually regain a lot of that hit points back, which will get it out of range of Thunderclap so it can live one and kill it with a Shadow Ball. Really cool play there. So that's already three kills for Drift Blim. Then comes the S Plus Lunala. And this thing is really interesting because it is four times weak to Shadow Ball, but it has Shadow Shield. And since it has Heavy Duty Boots on, and say it's still at full health and able to resist and take a lot less damage from any attack here. However, it goes for an agility and the plus two Shadow Ball is actually enough to knock it out. So then in comes Weavile, seeing that Lunalo is faster, he realizes, oh, I'm gonna be faster too. And he can just take it out with an Icicle Crash, but that allows for the Caesar to end the game there. Really great submission, super exciting match. In Stellar League, we actually have a season's first, and that is a two-time nominee. Mega Pinsir is back for the second consecutive week after being furious he missed out on the overall server MVP last week. He's down four to five right here, but behind a light screen, and he is dangerous with any amount of protection. So let's just play this out and see how the Mega Pinsir takes care of business. Gets up a Swords Dance, which makes it exceptionally dangerous. There's a Flame Charge on the other side, meaning it will outspeed and the screen goes away, but that Quick Attack is going to take it out easily. And then Return takes out the Glow King, and then it eats an Ice Shard and kills with an Earthquake. I don't think that crit mattered at all. Then comes Kirim, which is going to die to a Return. And finally, the Karate Kid, which also dies to a return. And that is a five mon sweep for the Mega Pinsir, nominated two weeks in a row. Next up in our second highest league, Victory League, we have Lugia, who is answering the question, is it better to be lucky or good? Lugia has been on Fraud Watch as far as S pluses go for a while now but it's demonstrating here that all it needs is a little bit of luck. So it's gonna come in and be immune to an earthquake and start setting up a Calm Mind. And, oh, misses a Stone Edge, big cheat there. 
Then it's going to go for an Aero Blast oh, and get a crit. Another big cheat there. As it gets tricked to Choice Scarf, it's going to pick up its first kill of the match. Now we're going to see the next instance of luck for Lugia. So, as you can see, the Terra Grass Arcanine is in behind a screen here versus a Gouging Fire that has been paralyzed. So that Arcanine is going to go for an Outrage, and that's its first turn of Outrage. That's important. So Beedrill comes in and, oh, it's Scarfed! So that's two turns of Outrage. And so Outrage can last two to three turns here. And so possibly Arcanine could end his Outrage right now and just be confused and be able to switch out safely. But no, of course not. It's going to be a three-turn Outrage, meaning Lugia is easily going to eat this hit and get the Revenge Kill with Aeroblast because it's Terra Grass with another crit. And that's really all Lugia is going to do here. It's going to trade some chip uh, eventually on this Mega, which dodges another Stone Edge, I might add. But that's the last kill Lugia is going to get as it comes back in, takes the rock chip, eats a close combat, no big deal, eats an extreme speed, and hits an earth power which doesn't quite take it out. The second extreme speed will take it out as well. So for those keeping track at home, that is two Stone Edge dodges, two crits from Lugia, as well as a three turn outrage, allowing Lugia to pick up multiple kills and almost a kill on the Lucario. Now, in our highest league, the Premier League, we have our nominee Bastiodon, and it is up four to three. But as you can see, these three are very scary. There is the Dragapult, and we've got in here a Zamazenta, which has two and a half times defense and has been going for body press, which will absolutely destroy a Bastiodon. And then there is the Terra Fairy Necrozma. So there are three massive threats left to deal with. So this game is far from over. Let's see how it happens. It is actually forced out because it predicts the Terra Ghost correctly as he goes for Roar, and it comes right back in, but minus the defense raises. So now he's able to throw out a Toxic on the Necrozma to put it on a timer, which is huge. And look how little this Photon Geyser does. It just gets up its rocks, gonna start phasing things around and having chip add up. It goes for a Calm Mind, but it just gets roared out right into the thing it didn't want to see, which is the Dragapult here, because it has that super effective Stab Shadow Ball. Uh, it does go into Crocodile, which is Scarfed and able to get the Revenge Kill there. Uh, Bastiodon will be back soon, so I'm just going to let this play, as here it is. Comes in, predicting the fighting move, but it goes for an Iron Defense instead. A Wild Charge crit only does 28%, and it just roars it out. Back here, and it's just kind of a slow death here, as neither Mon can actually kill Bastiodon, but Bastiodon can't do much to either of them. And so it's just kind of letting it die to Toxic, to Wild Charge Recoil, as well as to Stealth Rock Chip. And there's a Toxic, so now both remaining Mons are toxic and it's kind of over from here, it's just gonna take some time. The Heavy Slam is doing 5%, it's got lefties, but the Toxic is racking up. It does go for a Photon Geyser here, getting Bastion on low as it gets roared out one more time. And this is the matchup the Bastiodon wants to see, but they keep doubling out into Necrozma, taking 5% from a Heavy Slam. And so now at this point, Bastiodon needs to get out of here, because it doesn't want to eat another Photon Geyser. Uh, yep, there it comes. And we've actually seen that this is Specs, and so it's going to click Terra Fairy in case of the Dragon move, but Ice Beam is enough to take it out from there after all the chip. And finally, a Wild Charge into the Kyurem. Ice Beam nearly takes it out. And to preserve the differential, he's going to go into Bastiodon to take the Body Press. And after Toxic Damage, he's going to just take it out here with the Wild Charge, Body Press, or not Body Press, Heavy Slam combination. And that's how Bastiodon completely defused the end of that match. Uh, turning a really scary situation into a 4-0 victory and preserving some 
differential that's become really important in the Premier League. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please make sure to go and vote in the poll, which will be in the video's description, so that you can have a say in who the Week 3 server MVP will be. And please, please remember to like and subscribe to this video. I've been Gene, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.